Hello. Today we are honored to have Professor Finn Kirland from University of California, Santa Barbara. Professor Kirland generously agreed to sit with me and answer a few questions. Thank you, Professor. It's been almost 40 years since you wrote your seminal paper on time inconsistency. Do you believe central banks or governments are listening? I think central, ba uh, central banks are, I suppose, are, are a success story. I mean, uh, the ones that are able to resist political pressure and carry on a fairly consistent policy, they, they tend to result in, in a more benign uh, monetary policy. There, there have been studies ranking uh, central banks according to their independence and by and large uh, those with more independence uh, tend to be more consistent and, and, uh, and carry out good policy. Then, uh, then there are the uh, sad stories like uh, the Argentine uh, Central Bank which is, uh, you know, um, if, if, they don't, if the Central Bank doesn't do what uh, the Central Government uh, wants them to do, then uh, the head is fired and replaced by a different one. I mean, they, over, the, over the past 60 or 70 years, there, there have been uh, something like 55 heads of, uh, of the Argentine Central Bank. The European Central Bank recently announces a quantitative easing policy and as a keen supporter of fiscal policy as opposed to monetary policy, what's your take on that move? I don't know if there's anything different about the European uh, Central Bank. Um, I, I don't particularly think that the quantitative easing in the United States ha has had much positive effect. Um, in fact, the US economy has recovered amazingly slowly from from the recession in uh, from nine, from uh, uh, from 2009, uh, the growth has been slower than uh, the trend of the previous 70 years, and uh, that's that's rather disturbing. Are there some deep-rooted structural problems with these countries? I think uh, the main problem is uncertainty about the future fiscal policy, especially as it relates to to the to the business sector. What lessons should uh, new emerging and developing countries take uh, from the recent economic crisis and uh, different policies followed by different countries? The main thing they have to try to ensure is that they have the long-run credibility to attract um, both domestic and, and uh, perhaps uh, investment f from abroad. Um, there, are, there are amazing differences across the world in terms of uh, how fast or slowly they have grown in the past uh, few decades. And, uh, those differences most likely are related to the to the nature of institutions or lack of institution in in the various countries. What piece of advice would you give to economics graduate students such as myself? What I do stress to the students, and sometimes they discover this after they've already worked on some project, it is it is important to have a well-focused uh, project. Uh, a, a clear uh, question uh, you're addressing, um, because other, otherwise uh, you will have a hard time uh, getting anyone interested in what you're doing. Um, those who are most successful aren't necessarily those with the highest, you know, greatest technical abilities and so on, but they're they're often the ones who can identify the most interesting questions.